In this topic, we're going to extend our discussion of electric current to include how current flows through circuits. Now, here's an example of a simple circuit, and you can see some symbols there that we're going to have to explain. At the very top, you see here this long line and a short line. This is something that's going to provide a source of potential difference. If we're going to have our current flow, we need to have something that's going to provide a potential difference for the current to flow through. We actually call this an electromotive force, or more typically, simply an EMF. And you can think of it as a battery. It's something that's going to provide a voltage V for us. Now, current will flow from the positive side of that, and the long line always indicates the positive side of the EMF source, and so current will flow from there around through the circuit. And remember, our electric current here has the symbol I. Now, our wires that are connecting here, these nice long straight lines, we're going to assume in all of our circuits that they are essentially ideal conductors. They have zero resistance. Any resistance in the circuit is going to be indicated by one of these zigzaggy lines here. And that might represent a wire or some other component that actually resists the flow of current. And it will have the symbol R for resistance. So they're the three main components of our circuit there. The source of the voltage, the EMF, the current flowing through the wires, and also flowing through any resistors we have. And of course, we can remember back to last topic where we discussed Ohm's law that tells us the relationship between these are V equals IR. Now let's go and do some experiments, which is what physics is all about. Here we have a simulated circuit ready for us to add components to. Let's add a source of EMF, a battery. We'll add it into the circuit right there. Now, no current will be flowing because there's not a complete circuit. Let's add something else to the circuit. The resistors we're going to use here are going to be light bulbs. The advantage of those is as well as adding resistance, they allow us to see whether current is flowing or not. When the current flows through, the light bulb will light up. Let's add a light bulb to our circuit. And you can see we still have no current flowing because our circuit is still not complete. If we join that last remaining gap in the circuit, we should be able to get current to flow. Let's choose a closed switch to put there for the moment. That connects the two wires. And as you can see, now current is flowing, flowing around the circuit through each part. The light bulb is lighting up. If we remove that closed switch, once again, the circuit is broken. Sometimes people think that current flows out of the battery into whatever it can find, and there it stays. But no, it has to complete the circuit and come back to the other side of the EMF. Now let's try putting a second light bulb in. Again, we've completed the circuit. Now with these two light bulbs, it contains two resistors. How does this compare to the circuit we started with, with only one light bulb? Let's swap and see if you can see the difference. There we are with one light bulb. Did you see the difference? I'll put the second light bulb back and see if you can watch carefully. There certainly was a change. It seemed like the light bulbs glowed a little bit less brightly when there were two there, and that tells us there was less current flowing. Let's go back to our circuit diagram to see if we can understand why. So in the circuit diagram of the circuit we just built, you can see we now have two resistors placed in the circuit. Now they're placed one after the other, and we call this a series combination of components. This is a series circuit containing two resistors and a source of EMF, the voltage. Current will again flow around in the direction from positive to negative. But what's the effect of having that second resistor in there? Well, let's label them R1 and R2, our two resistors. They might be quite different resistors. We don't know just yet. What we do know is as the current flows through each of those resistors, there will be a change in potential from one side to the other, given by Ohm's law. So in fact, the potential across this resistor will be the current through that resistor multiplied by its resistance. The potential drop across the second one has a similar situation. It's the current through that resistor multiplied by the resistance of that resistor just there. Now, what we know here is that the sum of those potential differences must be the total potential difference that our EMF is providing. V1 plus V2 must equal the total voltage across the entire circuit. And we can now write that as I times R1 plus I times R2. Or, with a little bit of algebra, it's the current multiplied by R1 plus 
R2. And of course, we know for the entire circuit that V equals I times the total resistance of the circuit. Now it makes sense what we saw earlier in the circuit that we built. When we added another resistor, we increased the total resistance of the circuit. When you add resistors in series, you simply add up the values of the resistances, and that will lower the current. What we'll see in the next topic is a different way of adding components in a circuit, which actually has slightly different behavior.